scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside to the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyresia, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to give her what was said to Paul. And when she was baptized with her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray with me. Dear God, thank you for allowing us this time to listen to your word today. God, we want to ask you to be with us so that we can feel your presence. God, please open our heart so that we can accept your word, so that we can grab your hands through this time. God, please be with us until the end of this the time to share your word. Please be with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I remember a survey conducted at a church where I previously served. The survey included a question about personal goals as Christians. You know, but, you know, the research showed that many members there didn't have a clear goals rooted in, the, in their calling. Interestingly, it wasn't a lack of heart that held them back, but a lack of clarity on what to do. Indeed, I found that many Christians are willing, but struggle to know what steps to take preventing them from setting and achieving goals. I believe many of you here can relate to this fact. So therefore today, by examining Lydia's story, I hope we can find inspiration for our spiritual journeys and gain insight into the purpose that should guide our goal setting. Have you ever experienced God bringing people into your life? Before I decided to become a pastor, I had such an experience. I was someone who really didn't want to be a pastor at the time. God, I always mentioned that, God, I don't want to be a pastor. God, I don't want to be a, be a pastor. Push this God away. <laughs> but one day, people I barely knew, whom I had just met for the first time, suggested, why don't you become a pastor? But can you imagine? <laughs> But within a short period, I met three individuals, such individuals, three, not just one. So it was precisely these unexpected encounters that greatly influenced my decision, you know, to become a pastor. But have you ha ever had a moment in your life when you desperately needed God or needed someone's help, and just at that moment, you met the person who was exactly what you needed? Maybe you, all you have, right? You might have had the moments where you couldn't help but acknowledge that it, that it was more than mere coincidence. Coincidence. Today's meeting between Lydia and Paul was precisely this kind of divinely orchestrated encounter, divinely formed encounter. The Bible describes Lydia as a worshiper of God as a Gentile. But this indicates that she didn't believe in Jesus yet. However, after, you know, like a Jewish person. But after meeting Paul, she came to accept Jesus. The scripture says that God opened her heart. Meaning this meeting was in line with God's will. My beloved congregation, we, are all, we all had moments of profound encounter in our life. However, the most significant among these is our encounter with Jesus Christ. 
It was the moment when we accepted Jesus Christ into our hearts as our Savior. I believe all of you still remember the emotions of your first meeting with Jesus. Right? Vividly. It's like like before, like a, a day before, right? It happened a day before. But we often hesitate to fully follow and apply those feelings into action. Much like having the feeling of a one-sided love where someone loves another but doesn't know what to do for them, right? Have you ever, ever experienced one-sided love? Right? If you love somebody really hard but they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you're smiling. <laughs> that means your husband is not the first love, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, much like, to, actually, this actually fact reminds me of my own experience. So, I, I usually say to my wife, I love my wife, but I often don't know what she wants. <laughs> so that's why I still get scared with my wife. Don't you know what I really want to do? <laughs> Are you still in this one-sided love for me? <laughs> so, but yes, what I want to share is that if we love God, if the joy of your first encounter with Jesus is still alive in you, we don't hesitate to find and do what God likes. Right? We don't need to make a mistake like me. <laughs> Actually, that is the right thing to do. In this context, let's take a look at what sets Lydia apart from, from us or what makes her sin special. The Bible tells us that Lydia and her entire household were baptized. Even though it's not explicitly mentioned in the Bible, the fact that her entire family was baptized shows the significant role she played in helping them have spiritual encounters with Jesus. Imagine how challenging it can be to guide our family toward faith. Then how much harder must it be to evangelize other people, like neighbors? So can we force them to have faith? No. But does that mean we should sit idly by it? Absolutely not. If we do nothing, we should be rebuked by God like a servant in the biblical parable who received one talent but buried it, in, buried it in the ground and returned it to his master when he came back. But what should we do? Like Lydia, we should help and encourage spiritual encounters between Jesus and others through spiritual hospitality. Hospitality. So I want to mention spiritual hospitality, not just hospitality to serve people. But what I want to say, spiritual hospitality. Christians are called to be hospitable. hospitable. In simple terms, it means inviting and serving. Hospitality doesn't force anyone. Instead, it is filled with genuine care and compassion stemming from Christ's love. Lydia's faith in Jesus after she encountered him led her to invite and serve her family and neighbors. Through her hospitality, many people came to Jesus. Like Lydia, our role is to soften people's hearts through hospitality, especially spiritual hospitality. We should persistently welcome, invite, and serve those who may doubt Christ lack belief, dismiss him, or simply not know who God is. Through our hospitality, their guard will come down, right? They have guard. I want to listen to your message, right? They have guard. But we can make it come down through the hospitality. And God will open their hearts as God filled Lydia's heart with belief when Paul visited her. Everyone practice spiritual hospitality. This is the simplest practice that as those who have first encountered Jesus, we should do in response to God's call. God's calling. So I want to share a story about my sister in Lowe's sister. Actually, she was preparing to launch a beauty business. 
That's why she took a job at a cosmetic store to gain practical experience. At this shop, the owner had the daily tradition of providing breakfast for the employees and reading the Bible together. At first, she thought it was just a meditation session with good writing material because she didn't know what the Bible was. Maybe if she knew it was Bible, maybe she didn't want to participate. But she didn't know what, what is that, what that is. And especially since there were free meals and there is a good material to read, she decided to participate as a way to refresh her mind. But she had strong, actually she had strong beliefs in Buddhism and folk religion. In her situation, it, is not, it was not easy to accept Christ. But something unexpected happened. As she read the Bible, she found herself drawn to its words and faith began to grow in her heart. And finally, when she read about Jesus, the part of Jesus, she encountered him spiritually. Through the owner's hospitality, she had a faith in Jesus. What, is, what was more that she shared her newfound faith with her mother, and now both of them attend church together. What did her boss do? She thought and found ways to welcome others, creating opportunities for them to hear about Jesus. Opening people's heart is the work of God, so her boss her the owner did what she could without speculating on the outcome. Just she did. We may not avail, we, we may not be available available to directly bring others to faith in Jesus, right? It's very hard. But by serving as mediators for Christ through our invitation and interaction, we can create opportunities, opportunities for them to encounter Jesus and come to faith on their own. What I want to share is that you can be a source, source of support, encouragement, and inspiration to those around you. This is the, one of the important points of the spiritual hospitality. But what is even more remarkable is that this spiritual hospitality leads to the growth of the church. In the city of Cyrusia, where Lydia lived, there was no church at the time. However, her home became the first church in the city. The growth and development of the church work in the same way. When the church becomes a community that welcomes, invites, and serves people, the church grows and its influence expands. What we need to understand here is that not only individual versus the church, the assembly of the Christians has been established for the purpose of the spiritual hospitality. That's why Romans chapter 12 verse 13, it says, Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Do not be haughty, but associate with the Lord. The Bible urges us, the Bible urges church not only to perform good deeds, but also practice hospitality with others. I want to share one story of the Hinata. The Hinata, an immigrant from Japan, lived in a city, lived in a small city in the United States. As she adjusted to a new environment and culture, she felt loneliness and isolation. One day she heard the news that local church was hosting an event for immigrants. So she decided to participate. She joined various programs for immigrants and received the rangish lessons offered at the church. But church members extended warm hospitality to Hinata and other immigrants, listening to difficulties and concerns and offering assistance. Through the church, she made new friends and with the help of the congregation, she overcame the challenges she faced as an immigrant at the time. Although she had never attended church before, she discovered that those who helped her were followers of Jesus. So Hinata's desire to hear the word of Jesus grew strong through the hospitality and service of the church members 
and she eventually accepted Jesus later and became a believer in Christ. Her story shows us the transformative power of hospitality. This is the role of the church and our role as well. Let us remember that just as she was drawn to Jesus through the loving hospitality of the church members, we too can lead others to the Savior by showing them the love and grace that we have received from God. However, is it difficult to practice hospitality on a personal or a church level because it requires something special? Do you think it needs something special? Of course, something special may be needed. But the important thing is that it is not a specialness that we lack. We already have our own specialness. Therefore, it is not difficult to build a hospitable church because God has blessed each of you with unique gifts, abilities, and resources. How did Rivia manage to evangelize her entire family and establish her home as a church? How? It was possible when she used what she has, considering them as gifts from God. In her time, Lydia was a merchant of purple clothes, a luxury item sold only to the rich. She was wealthy and, despite being a woman in the ancient world, had enough leadership ability to lead her family and other people. But what was important is that she used all that she had, such as readership, wealth, or time, to invite people to Jesus and serve them. The point is that we have to share what we have, given from God. Take a look at your hand and fingers. Oh, you have the, your hand, right? And fingers. Each one is different in its own way, but plays an essential role, helping the hand function properly, right? Each one has their own function. I imagine that our lives are like a hand. And each, of, each one of us represents a finger on that hand. We are like different fingers. Each of us possesses, possesses a unique talents and abilities given to us by God. And just like each finger has a specific law, our calling as followers of, followers of Christ is to use our God-given gifts for spiritual hospitality. If even one finger fails to perform its role, the entire hand suffers. Right? Have you ever experienced that the, your finger was broken? It's very hard to use our finger, right? Everything is stopped. Everything stops. Likewise, if we fail to use our talents for spiritual hospitality, we may not be fulfilling our Lord's as God's hand. We are all part of the same hand, and each of us is essential for the hand to function properly. What is the function of God's hand? Invite and serve. Invite people to your home and serve them. Invite other people to the church and serve them so that they can encounter the Jesus through your life. I truly believe that each one of you has been blessed by God with unique gift. Right? As Dan took the video, right? <laughs> unique gift. So, let's not let those gifts go to waste. Let's use them to serve as a mediator for encounters between Jesus and others. Let's, let's function as the hand of God. Perhaps some of you might think, Oh, I don't have any special talent. But is that really true? I want to re de de define the, special, the meaning of a special talent. Think about it. You have a voice to speak, hands and feet to move, a home to invite others into, and skills, talents, and experience to share. For example, serving immigrants didn't require special talent. It simply requires our time and participation. It's not the, something special, but it is special. The heroes of our time are not individuals with outstanding abilities. 
The heroes of our time are those who can share their hearts with others in their own ways. Let's see Lydia's life after meeting Paul and coming to believe in Jesus. Her approach, her action, her hospitality planted the church, grew the church, and transformed it into a church that received praise from God. Where it is in the book of Revelation. God praised that church. We don't need superpowers like Iron Man. Right? What we need is to discover and utilize what God has already given us. Everyone, our faith is not meant to be hidden but shared so that we can expand God's kingdom and spread Jesus' love. Our spiritual life goal should be precisely this, to strive towards this purpose. Let us entirely embrace our calling to serve and love others, to use our unique gifts to open, the, open doors for spiritual encounters, and to function as the hand of God in this world. My beloved congregation, I hope that you will become a mediator of Christ, a messenger of the God you love, a new hero who can gift everyone in your surrounding with a beautiful encounter with Jesus. Only you can give them the Jesus. Only you can allow them to meet Jesus so that they can be saved. So let's speak together. So I say we are, I want you to say mediators. So we are mediators. Yeah, we are mediators. I say we are, you say superheroes. We are superheroes. We are. Superheroes. Yes, you are superheroes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>